Well, thank you for coming to the session about how Alloy syncs data with Amazon Buy With Prime. Today, you will walk out of the session knowing how to quickly build a scalable data syncing solution using AWS services, as well as how to effectively work with a partner to collaborate on complex integrations. My name is Yuval. I'm a solution architect at Amazon Buy With Prime, and I help partners to create businesses with Buy With Prime integrations. I'm here today to present our very first marketplace app launch, Alloy. We have here the co-founder and CTO of Alloy Automation, Greg. Hey, everybody. I'm Greg, one of the founders of Alloy. We're a no-code workflow automation platform. So today, we are going to go over what is Amazon product buy with Prime, components we have to work with, and then I'll have Greg come back up on stage and take over and discuss Alloy solution for syncing data with Amazon's buy with Prime service. We'll finish up by pointing out key decisions we made, oh, sorry, uh, how we solved the problem, and key takeaways. So, you're probably wondering, what is Buy With Prime? Buy With Prime is Amazon's new service launched in May 2022. For the first time ever, shoppers are able to use the checkout experience we all know and trust from Amazon.com and extend Prime shopper benefits, including fast, free, one to two day shipping, a seamless checkout experience, and free returns to merchants' own online stores, ultimately increasing the selection for Prime members. For merchants already using fulfillment by Amazon, Buy With Prime can easily add to their online store within minutes. The result is a merchant's own online store, just with added Prime benefits. Merchants such as Gentle Living and Bossy Cosmetics are using Buy With Prime today. You can visit their website to check out uh, the Buy With Prime experience and maybe get some deals from Cyber Monday <laughs> to enable the merchants to effectively manage their businesses. They would need additional software or some professionals to handle items such as accounting, customer support, or data analytics. To unburden their unnecessary heavy lifting, we join forces with Buy With Prime partners. We do this by utilizing the Buy With Prime marketplace, which allows merchants to add plugins or apps that will enhance their business operation with Buy With Prime. Let's discuss an example of one of the challenges that we solved with, for the merchants with one of our partners how to display true orders to the merchants. So let's say you are a merchant who has a big commerce retail store. In this case, on the left-hand side, uh, shown as your direct-to-consumer site, or DTC. After adding Buy With Prime in your store, you face a new and unique situation where you have two sources of orders and catalogs to manage. You have orders being placed in your big commerce store, but the Buy With Prime orders do not show in your big commerce orders. So this creates a bit of confusion for the merchants and just an unpleasant experience. So we needed to create a solution to solve this issue. This is where we looked to partner up with Alloy for their e-commerce automation expertise. Now, before we see how Alloy solved this, Let's look at what are the tools available for Buy With Prime technical partners to innovate and create a scalable solution to solve this issue or issues like this. Buy With Prime currently provides two main interfaces. One is a GraphQL API to interact with our system. You can query existing data, create and update data objects, including order and product, as long as you have the right permissions. The second is a real-time event bus. So essentially, you can run CRUD operations against our data uh, and also create real-time solutions using events. Even though Alloy is using both of these tools, the solution heavily uses events. So let's define the, events, the event delivery mechanism to better understand the whole solution. 
So let's say a shopper places an order in your store. Buy with Prime will use Amazon EventBridge to notify the third party application that the order was placed using an order placed event. This allows the third party to receive this information in near real time. Since those events are sensitive by nature, we wanted to be cautious and deliver them safely while taking into account both security and availability. For that reason, we are using uh, Amazon EventBridge for partners to consume our events. We currently ask partners uh, to set up this SaaS event bus using their AWS account. By doing this, we ensure the events are delivered through a private and secure connection, as well as automatic retries for when delivery fails in an AWS well-architected fashion. So now that we know the components we have to work with on the Buy With Prime side, Greg will come on up and take it away to explain to you Alloy's solution. All right. Go. We're having a bit of a technical issue here. Oops. So sorry about that. Thanks, you all. I'm super excited to tell you all about Alloy and how we solve this critical problem for Buy With Prime. As an automation company, our partnership with Buy With Prime was a natural fit. We're constantly building out new integrations, but before we get into it, a bit of background about our business. So you might be asking, what is Alloy? I founded Alloy with the goal of empowering merchants to connect different platforms together without having to hire engineers. Sure, there's plenty of automation platforms out there, but having worked in e-commerce myself, I came to realize that all the platforms available before Alloy weren't verticalized. With Alloy, merchants can define complex automations via a no-code workflow builder. And since our founding, we've grown our platform to over 220 integrations and counting. We connect everything from DTC sites like Big Commerce and Magento to ERPs like NetSuite. And on top of that, we're backed by some of the best investors in the world, including A16Z, Bain Capital, Y Combinator, and career e-commerce operators. So with all this in mind, we set out to build a world-class experience for Buy With Prime merchants. As you've always mentioned, Buy With Prime is a Prime as a service that sits atop an existing DTC site. Orders placed through Buy With Prime will be cataloged separately from their traditional DTC orders. What this means is that merchants would see a fragmented view of their order data, and buy with Prime orders would not appear in line with the orders made on their main storefront. This is where Alloy comes in. So leveraging our powerful e-commerce automation platform, we enable merchants to sync their buy with Prime orders over to their D2C sites to have a single source of truth. And we did this by templatizing common use cases to help merchants set up and collide with these integrations in a mere matter of minutes. We launched these integrations officially this fall as the first ever apps on the Buy With Prime marketplace. So now that you have an understanding of how this works, let's discuss a few key terms that we often use to describe how our platform works. So first up, every app that we support is represented in Alloy as a block. As I mentioned before, we have over 220 of these blocks, which allow our customers to connect virtually any e-commerce apps to one another. So in order to do this, we have to tell Alloy how these blocks should talk to one another. As you can see here, our workflow has a Buy With Prime block and a Big Commerce block. How you specify the data should flow through Alloy is called a workflow. So let's break this down. On the left-hand side, we have our trigger block. The trigger block is a special type of block that starts the workflow. Behind the scenes, these trigger blocks subscribe to incoming events from a third-party service. In our example on screen, the trigger block tells Alloy to listen in for new events coming from Buy With Prime. When a new order is sent to Alloy, the trigger starts the workflow. Now we'll talk a little bit more on how we handle the infra here in greater detail in just a moment. On the right-hand side, we have our action block. The action block makes an outgoing API call to a third-party service. With Alloy, you can stitch together the data from trigger blocks and sync that data directly to an action block. In this example, our action block is represented by Big Commerce. So as a reminder, we want to sync buy with Prime orders to DTC sites such as Big Commerce. In other words, what we're saying is when an order comes in to buy with Prime, do something in Big Commerce. 
Together, these components, the trigger and the action blocks, comprise a workflow. Now, to make things easier for our merchants, who are often non-technical and want an out-of-the-box solution, we've built recipes. Recipes are pre-built workflows that can be quickly and easily imported by a merchant. You can think of recipes like templates. All the merchant has to do is connect their apps to Alloy. Recipes greatly simplify the process of building automations for repeatable use cases. This is important because our teams identified most anticipated buy with prime use cases. And in doing so, we turned each of these use cases into recipes. Now, every time that a block runs on Alloy, we count that as an invocation in our backend system. Merchants purchase these actions in bulk for their corresponding monthly usage. In this example, let's take a look at how the buy with prime to big commerce workflow functions behind the scenes. So first up, this workflow fetches a list of products from Buy With Prime, and we then iterate through each product. Alloy handles the console of loops with our iterate block. Afterwards, we search for the corresponding product in Big Commerce, and if found, we sync the relevant Buy With Prime details over accordingly. Each time that a block in this workflow is invoked, we count that as an action. Together, these concepts give you a better understanding of how our system works behind the scenes. All right, so now that you understand how this works, let's take a look at a quick demo. We prepared a video, let's run the video. Platform integration. This video will use BigCommerce as an example, taking a look at what the integration does, we'll cover why it's needed, how it works, and what you can expect installation-wise. At its most basic level, a Buy With Prime Big Commerce integration is needed as merchants want a source of truth, a destination where they can get a holistic overview of their orders, customers, product data, and more. The modern merchant sells their products in many sales channels all throughout the web. They use all types of tools to make that happen. Let's say a merchant is using Big Commerce, eBay, Yapo, and a few other apps to power their store. Generally speaking, they'll be connected via native integrations, so all their data lives in one unified location. However, when a merchant adds a new sales channel like Buy With Prime to their tech stack, the platform might not integrate with every tool a merchant uses to power their store. Nevertheless, they still need the valuable sales channel data to make its way into other parts of their tech stack. That's where Alloy comes in. We are the e-commerce world's connectivity layer. Through a partnership directly with Buy With Prime, Alloy sends your Buy With Prime customer and order data to Big Commerce or the equivalent e-commerce platform. So what does the integration actually look like? what data is passed over, and when. When you install the integration, data flows from Buy With Prime to Big Commerce, but only at certain stages of the order. When orders are fulfilled in Buy With Prime, they're sent over to Big Commerce as fulfilled. More specifically, Alloy sends over line item, sales tax, shipping address, and customer information to Big Commerce or the equivalent e-commerce platform. The merchant's integration installation experience is quick, painless, and secure. To install the integration, the merchant navigates to the Marketplace section of their Buy With Prime console. After selecting the e-commerce platform and clicking Install, the merchant gets prompted to create an Alloy account in a new tab. The merchant's then asked to authenticate their e-commerce account. After authenticating, all the merchant has to do is activate the integration and the tab will automatically close out. From there, the integration should run in the background without any issues. The merchant's able to log into their Alloy account at any time to see the workflow that powers the integration. Thanks for listening, and happy integrating. All right, so as you can see from the demo, we have focused heavily on simplifying the onboarding process for Buy With Prime merchants. After just a few clicks, they're able to begin syncing their Buy With Prime orders directly to their stores. Working under a time crunch, our team needed to have everything ready to go for Buy With Prime September 1 launch. Both before and shortly after the launch, we need to respond to issues that cropped up in, uh, in production and in real time Utilizing several managed services on AWS has allowed us to do this as quickly and as efficiently as possible. With this in mind, let's take a look at how the syncing works behind the scenes. So here's how Alloy integrates with Buy With Prime at a very high level. As you can see, there are four overall components. The first is event ingestion. The second here are our servers.
The third is monitoring. And lastly, the fourth is data persistence. All right, so let's talk about data ingestion. To handle data ingestion, we receive events from Amazon EventBridge. By doing so, we can create a private connection to buy with Prime to reduce the possible attack surface and to secure our customers' data. Next up, we then route the event data to our Kubernetes cluster. Alloy has utilized Kubernetes since our inception to manage our failure recovery, our auto-scaling, and our automated deployment strategies. Therefore, it made sense for us to add another deployment to our cluster to handle BioWith Prime specific workloads. Now, our ingest server deployment handles all incoming event data uh, from BioWith Prime, and it, it scales with horizontal pod auto scaling. We'll dive deeper into this in a later section of our presentation today. Afterwards, we then queue up the data in Amazon MQ, and we'll talk more about that in just a few moments. All right, so next up, to alert us of errors, we monitor the application with CloudWatch and Prometheus. And lastly, we utilize DynamoDB, MongoDB, and Amazon S3 for data persistence. Now, we have various needs for storing data at Alloy. For example, we need to store historical workflow runs in order to show our customers what data they have processed and to provide context for failures. We also need to cache BioPrime order data and store metadata to reduce the runtime of BioPrime executions. Less frequently accessed historical data is moved to Amazon S3, which reduces our storage cost while still allowing that data to be accessible via MongoDB's data lake. So at this point, you've seen how the info works at a very, very high level. Now, let's break down a typical BioPrime execution in depth. So first up, Violet Prime sends us an order placed event via Amazon EventBridge. That data is then routed to the webhook server in EKS, where we store the event data, along with order-specific metadata in our MongoDB. We strive to make our platform as resilient and failure-proof as possible, and this enables us to allow our customers to rerun the workflow execution in the event of an error. For instance, if the DDC experiences temporary downtime, we can handle that failure gracefully. Now, the webhook ingest then queues up a task in Amazon MQ. Amazon MQ acts as a buffer between our ingest and our worker pods, preventing incoming traffic spikes from propagating through our system. It also facilitates distributing jobs across multiple servers. Now, AWS provides many message delivery services, but a few of our other requirements are uniquely met by Amazon MQ. Amazon MQ pushes jobs to a server over a single web socket, so we don't have to worry about orchestrating long pulling of several separate queues. On top of that, it allows us to schedule jobs well into the future, which is important as an automation business. Now, once the data gets through the queue, there are several EKS servers designated to handle BioWith Prime-specific workloads. Amazon MQ sends the event data to one of these servers to begin processing the event. BioWith Prime emits thin events to optimize network resources, so Alloy requests the order data that we need from the BioWith Prime GraphQL API. This order data will include information about products purchased, sales tax, shipping, and tracking information. So let's recall one of our use cases. Our merchant wants to sync their BioWith Prime order data over to a D2C site. And in our example, this is big commerce. To achieve this, we need to correlate the product information that is received from BioWith Prime with the product variant information used by big commerce. Making constant API calls between our services is a waste of our resources and results in added latency for users. Therefore, in order to provide the best possible experience for our end users, we came up with a caching layer using DynamoDB. By with Prime matches products across D2C sites by their SKUs. What this means is that the product SKUs in a D2C will match with by with Prime. This identifier allows our system to track the product data across both the D2C and the by with Prime systems. So LY first queries the Dynamo cache for the by with Prime product SKU. If a record exists in DynamoDB, then the cached information is first used. On the flip side, if there is no product SKU cached, then Alloy will make a request to the DTC site to find the product variant information by its SKU. This product information is then added to our DynamoDB cache to improve future executions. So at this point, we've retrieved all the information relevant to the event. To continue the execution, Alloy queues up the next step of the workflow in Amazon MQ. During the execution, 
We track logs and errors and internal metrics such as latency and store metadata. To do so, we create a record of the workflow execution with our BioPrem details in MongoDB. This record can later be used to access and display analytics to re and also rerun workflows in the event of an API failure. But the integration with Bioth Prime and the DDC site is a two-step process that involves both order creation and order fulfillment. In the first step, Eloy makes an API call to the DDC to create an order with Bioth Prime details. We need to record a mapping between the Bioth Prime order and the DDC order that we have created to accomplish the second step. We then save the order information in our update execution record in MongoDB. This execution record can later be used to access uh, from the LA console so the merchant can see the activity in their store in real time. Okay, so now that you see how this kind of works at a very high level, let's talk about scalability. As an automation business, we have focused heavily on scalability and failure handling to provide the most end-to-end -end and reliable experience for our customers. When building this integration, we need to ensure that our infra could handle any merchant's traffic, all the way up from mom-pop stores to retail goliaths. So let's assume there's a sudden increase in purchases on Buy With Prime. All of these orders will result in a spike in the rate of events that are pushed to EventBridge. Our first step to mitigate this spike is to set a 50 requests per second rate limit on EventBridge. The ability to set this rate limit on our end is one of the key reasons why Buy With Prime uses EventBridge instead of HTTP webhook requests. Now, if the rate of incoming events exceeds the rate limit that we have set, the events themselves will remain in queued until they're either delivered or have been in the queue for over 24 hours. This provides us with a buffer in the event of transient spikes, but if the steady state traffic exceeds our limit, we then need to scale up our infrastructure to meet the demand accordingly. Now, the ingest servers are capable of processing many more events than the workers themselves are set up to handle. And since they are decoupled via the message queue, the ingest servers will not be rate limited by the worker's ability to take on new jobs. Now, this is where things could become dicey. In our scenario, if we're not constantly monitoring the incoming traffic, our worker pods will not be scaled out to meet the demand and will quickly become overwhelmed. To address this, we monitor the rate of incoming events with Prometheus. And in turn, Prometheus metrics are connected to the horizontal pod autoscaler via a metrics adapter. Now, our horizontal pod autoscaler will determine how many pods are required to handle the incoming traffic based on our metric targets. In our traffic spike example, the HPA will increase the number of worker pods to meet the demand accordingly. With this, we solve at least part of the scalability problem. Unfortunately, things aren't that easy. Our pods reside on several EKS nodes, the number of which is controlled by the cluster autoscaler. When the horizontal pod autoscaler attempts to add more pods, there's a chance that the current set of nodes has already reached capacity. When and if this occurs, the cluster autoscaler will automatically deploy more nodes. Unfortunately, node deployment can take several minutes and is not very reactive. This can pose a serious problem for us in the event of a traffic spike. If we're unable to, quick, to quickly scale up our infrastructure, then the time to process each event will be significantly increased. To solve this, we can over-provision our cluster. And to do so, we have a pool of low-priority warm-up pods. These pods serve only the purpose of filling an extra node's capacity and reserve it for active pods. So when an active pod is deployed by the horizontal pod autoscaler, it will take the place of a warm-up pod instead of requiring a whole new node to be deployed. This decreases the time to deploy a new pod, and thus alloy becomes more reactive. So in our scenario, our warm-up pod has been evicted from our over-provisioned node. Therefore, the cluster autoscaler nodes start spinning up a new node to prepare for future and further horizontal pod autoscaling events. Now, in the perfect world, nothing ever goes wrong. We have autoscaling working perfectly, and our users are happily syncing their data. Unfortunately, as we all know in this room, that's not always the reality. Consider that we develop and maintain over 200 integrations at Alloy. With this in mind, something's bound to go wrong every once in a while. At any given moment, we're seeking vast amounts of critical business data for our merchants. And as a result, we are always cognizant of potential errors and try to anticipate them ahead of time. We monitor our infra for potential failures at every layer of the application, from the ingestion all the way down to the execution. To 
isolate failed events which are improperly handled by our webhook ingest. Our first line of defense is a dead letter queue. Amazon EventBridge natively supports dead letter queues. So EventBridge will first attempt to deliver the payload to Alpha's webhook ingest. In the event that the webhook ingest pods become unresponsive or throttle the incoming request, EventBridge will resend the event several more times with an exponential back off and jitter. If the attempt's webhook delivery continue to fail for more than 24 hours, the event will then get sent to a secondary queue in Amazon SQS. When the events are received in this dead letter queue, Amazon SQS will trigger a Lambda function with the failed event to notify the Alloy team of this failure. Unfortunately, incoming ingest errors aren't the only possible type of failure. While in common, errors do occur within our third-party connectors. To address this, we take several steps to ensure that our system is seamless. Many error scenarios exist which require the user action to remedy them. For instance, maybe a user has revoked their OAuth access token, or orders cannot be fulfilled due to a misconfiguration. In these scenarios, we will encounter errors during their execution that we cannot prevent with code alone. So to solve for this, we surface workflow execution logs directly to our users. Whenever an execution is recorded in MongoDB, regardless of the success or the failure state, that log is accessible to the user in the Alloy console. Unfortunately, a typical Alloy user will only access the console to set up their workflows, but is not regularly returning to the console to monitor for issues. Therefore, if an issue occurs that requires our user to take action, we send an alert to the customer. This alert is delivered as an email via Amazon SES, urging the customer to log into Alloy and to investigate the problem. Now, in the event of an error, we save that error in MongoDB in our workflow executions collection. This collection tracks all ongoing and completed workflow runs. This error is then serviced to the user in the Alloy console the next time they log in. The user can then see the exact error stored in the executions collection to help them better understand why the workflow has failed. And next, let's take a look at infrastructure failure. For example, let's assume that an operational failure occurred, be a pod ran out of memory. In this scenario, Amazon MQ will send the job information to the pod and wait for an acknowledgement that the pod has finished the job. If the pod has died, a core component of our infra is now critically impacted. So in our hypothetical example, since our pod has died, Amazon MQ has not received an acknowledgement back that the pod has completed the job. And because we have not yet heard back after a specified time limit, Amazon MQ will retry the job on another available pod. If the pod responds back successfully, then the retry flow exits and the job continues as intended. So at this point, we've only briefly touched on monitoring. As we previously mentioned, we make heavy use of Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus to monitor the rate of incoming traffic to know when and how to scale up our infrastructure. We rely heavily on a combination of Prometheus and Grafana to monitor our EKS cluster for changes in traffic, and we use Amazon CloudWatch to monitor the rest of our stack. We use these managed services to minimize the operational burden of maintaining and updating them on our own. Now, engineering at Alloy is a constant cycle of learning and evolution. In order to provide the best possible experience to our end users, we are always asking ourselves to, to identify areas of the application for improvement. And the most common method to identify errors is through logging. So as we mentioned before, we record metrics for every biothermal execution in our MongoDB database. These metrics will provide a detailed breakdown of, of the performance of every area of our application. However, other aspects of the application require more real-time monitoring. We have set up Prometheus counters and histograms to record the number and the duration of biofirm events that are being sent to us from EventBridge, both successful and unsuccessful executions, and outbound API requests. We can then take these metrics and graph them in Grafana to create a dashboard to see how our application is performing at a glance. 
These metrics enable us to better understand and to pre prepare for future problems such as scalability. On top of that, we also require alerts to be sent to our team when an issue is detected in production. One way to detect issues is to set targets on our metrics within Grafana. We can then configure Grafana to, to send Slack alerts to LOA engineers when a target threshold is reached. An example of this would be maybe the, the events uh, coming in for an extended period of time are zero. In this scenario, if the duration of the execution exceeds an established benchmark, something is not right, and that warrants a bit of looking into. So at this point, you've seen how we built the first ever app on the Buy With Prime marketplace. In this session, we've taken a look at how we built this powerful integration with Buy With Prime. To recap, we used Amazon EventBridge to ingest the incoming data from Buy With Prime, and we have made heavy use of Amazon managed services to streamline our operations. We took a deeper look at how the data flow works behind the scenes. And along the way, we've addressed error handling, scalability, and monitoring. We've talked about the various ways that Alloy handles potential errors and how our system reacts to increases in network traffic. Thank you all for coming, and back to you, Yuval. Awesome. Hello? Hello? Oh, awesome. Uh, thank you, Greg, for that wonderful deep dive. All right, so before we conclude this presentation, let's review the key architecture decisions between Alloy and Buy With Prime. Number one, Alloy built their integration using a scalable design, making sure that they are able to handle in many incoming events at once using Amazon MQ and Kubernetes pods. Number two, uh, quick response to air handling is crucial for customer trust. So Allo designed their system to record events in MongoDB and send error messages using SES. And number three, Allo is heavily using managed services in their infrastructure to easily handle all the infrastructure that they're using. Now, if you are a merchant like Bossy Cosmetics or Gentle Living, come talk to us about enhancing your business with Buy With Prime. If you are a partner like Alloy, Join the marketplace and start developing your solution with Buy With Prime. And if you are looking for e-commerce automation, come talk with our amazing presenter, Greg, about the great things that Alloy is doing. Thank you for coming to this session. Please use this QR code uh, to join our Buy With Prime interest list. Um, and feel free to ask us questions after this session. We'll be towards your right, towards the exit, they told me. Um, so thank you, Greg, and to Alloy. Now, if you enjoyed the session, make sure to leave feedback in the app on the survey they mentioned uh, for us to tell you that. Um, and make sure you visit the de Demo Theater session booth on Thursday at the Venetian Expo, where you can actually experience Buy With Prime. Um, we have here some wonderful Buy With Prime members that they'll be available to talk with you as well. So thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming. <laughs>